Hello and welcome to Gaff TV, giving all fans football. And today, part of our special, we're going off the pitch and joined by me, far too beautiful to be a footballer, I'm sure you've <laughs> noticed, philanthropist, model, actress, entrepreneur, all round lovely lady, Mene Donko. Hello, how are you, my darling? I'm good, how are you? I kind of wish you were sitting a bit further away right now. <laughs> She's kind of pretty, and this is first thing in the morning. It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you. Seen so much about you, read so much about you. We're hoping you'd be slightly uglier in real life. <laughs> She's not, it's quite disappointing. You're in London, what are you doing over here? Oh, gosh, um, I've been pretty much um, everywhere. Um, I just got back on Friday from New York. I was in New York supporting my husband. Now, they, um, let's just, as you do, you know your husband. He's not just any old guy on the road, is he? No. Silly Montari, AC Milan <laughs> midfielder, Ghana player, absolute football extraordinaire, which in this neck of the woods makes you a super wag. A super wag. A super wag. A what wife. is a super wag? A super wag. A wag is a wife and girlfriend mm -hmm. of a footballer. Mm -hmm. But when it's silly, super wag kind of means you're a bit of a hero. So there cool. you are. Do you know that we're obsessed with wags in this country? Apparently. <laughs> just, just a little bit. We need to know it. <laughs> kind of obsessed with wags. And I mean, you're a super wag because it's not just about being a footballer's wife for you. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, he's quite a well-known footballer. We all know Sully because he came and played for Sunderland on loan this year, didn't he? Yes, he did. So you got to experience Premier League life. What was that like? It was, um... Well, very normal because really, you know, he does his thing. He's a football player, but again, when he's home, yeah, he's Sule. You That's know, it. not Sule Muntari. He's yeah. just Sule, and um, it's it's just the atmosphere, though. Like really, in terms of the football itself, mm -hmm. um, the fans were just very supportive, and I think um, they're they're more passionate. You know, when it comes to football, like did you support your teams here quite a lot? Oh, just a bit. Yeah, just a little bit obsessed with football in this country. Yeah. You met Sully in Germany at the World Cup final in two thousand and six. Yes, I did. So hang on, you're a football fan yourself, then. Uh, not really. I was not a football fan um, really? until I met Sule. Uh -huh. I was in Germany um, on vacation with my really? cousin yeah, and sister. And then you met him? Yeah. He's from Ghana? Mm -hmm. You're from Ghana? Yeah. Had you met him before? No. And you just, that was it? But you um, didn't start dating straight away? No. He had to work. <laughs> he had to put in yeah. work. There we are. He I had like to that. put in work, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Tell me. For about six, seven months. You're chasing. Yeah, he was persistent though. He won't give up. And what made you finally go, all right, lovely, silly, I will um, be your girlfriend? I think a lot of people um, do not know this side of Sule because he's very, um, you know, he, he's a teddy bear. He's really sweet, you know, and, um, and he has a soft spot for kids. Yes. And I work with a lot of children, so just, you know, that connection that he had with kids especially with my nieces and nephews when he came around was I think what won me over yeah that's what did it for you you yeah. do work with children a great deal you answer me. you've got the Monet Foundation 500 children that you've helped raise come through your school you also as well as a philanthropist you're a humanitarian you helped 600 children or more in an orphanage that mm -hmm. you know suffer from HIV and AIDS and I read something that I thought was beautiful that you said no child should be brought into this world without hope and I thought that was so powerful what what do you think gives people and gives children like that hope how can you provide it well there's so much an individual can do but it it takes you know it starts from somewhere really and for me I grew up um, you know having being instilled in me that you know if you're put in a position or a situation where you're capable you should do it you know and it's so unfortunate that there are a lot of kids um, are in a situation where you know it's not your choice yeah but um, but it's a mistake you know that the parents would make so um, really for me um, it's just a matter of like doing what you can Mm -hmm. And if you're able to give and support a child to make a difference, why not? You know, um, education, really something they can never take back. Yeah. And I thank my dad for uh, being the founder of Mini International School and, you know, just being able to continue his legacy. That's something that I'm really proud of. So you should be. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. See, and I want to know how you do it because 
you have a business masters from York School in Toronto, so you, you yourself run Zafra Limited, isn't it, where you have your property business. Mm -hmm. I know you're expanding, we've got so much to talk. I get tired just thinking about all the stuff that you do. So what I want to know is, how do you fit it all in? So you've got this business background, you do an awful lot of charity work, your husband is a famous footballer, you have to support him because, you know, it's a marriage and a marriage that's what you do, you put the effort in, you make it work. How do you fit it all in? How on earth do you prioritise a day? You just call me a super wife. <laughs> that's why you're a super wife right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm, I'm, if I was human, I couldn't do it, but fortunately So I'm. there you go. No, but I think it's about just, um, you know, um, Organizing your time really because mm -hmm. marriage does take a lot of work with exactly. two different people from yeah. different backgrounds and you know He has a, he has his opinions. I have mine and you just need to gel at some point, you know comes to compromise So there's a lot of work and um, At the same time, you know, I obviously have my career that I'm focusing on mm -hmm. my charity work so it's about just making time for everything, you know scheduling and um making sure that you're enjoying what you're doing because if you're not, trust me, it does not work. You do, you ever, do you ever get annoyed? Do people ever assume? I don't know if the WAG culture is as prolific in Ghana and in Milan as it is here. People sometimes misconstrue a WAG sitting around, doing the nails, waiting for the husband to earn the money. Do people ever assume because you are married to a famous footballer, you are Mrs. Montari and that's it? Of course. What do you do? Do you slap them? No. <laughs> do you want to? It's part of who I am, really, you mm. know, because they see me in magazines, yeah. pictures. Oh, she looks perfect. Yeah, she does. It's quite annoying. No. <laughs> it takes a lot of work, really. Um, but um, I just like the element of surprise when they assume and then they finally get to meet me. They go, oh my God, you're so sweet. You're so kind and you know you're this and you're that so it's just an element of surprise and you know sometimes you just need to grow a thick skin and mm -hmm. just brush some of the stuff off your shoulder and just move on because you can't really um, base your existence on what people think really so it comes with the territory you deal with it and you move on it's been lovely yes. sweetheart pleasure it's been absolutely lovely give our love to Sunny and all the supporters. I tell him. <laughs> Please do. And if you're ever back in Sunderland on Newcastle, just give me a wave. Why not? Why not? Why Thank not? you. From Gaff TV, this is Monet. This is Harry. Bye-bye. Ciao.